Lemon Amiga Presents A Play Giant Video Review Sit Back and Enjoy the Show Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga game guide and review. In this week's episode, we'll be checking out Tin Toy Adventure, which was an AGA game developed by Mutation Software and published by Mutation in 1996. From this options menu, we can see a few keys that we can press inside that game, and we can also change our lives from 3 up to 5. And for this review, well, let's leave that on five because I've never actually played this game before and one each spell seems to make sense. We can also exit that screen and we can check out another information screen which gives us some credits about this game and you may be surprised to learn that the entire thing from top to bottom was coded, programmed and designed by Adrian Cummings and it was released through his own label which he released through mail order in 1996. So full rights to him for this game and it's his game from top to bottom so let's press fire and check this game out. And as you can see, the first presentation screen is tremendous, and this is an AGA game, of course, this works on the Amiga 1200 and the Amiga 4000 machines. You can see the path is flashing, we are on the enchanted path according to that screen, so let's press fire and enter that game, and by pressing fire we can throw stars towards those enemies from our special tin toy suit. Yes, in this game we play as a tin toy and if we collide with anything our damage will be hit. You can see a small damage meter on that top bar. It is into the yellow at the moment and that resembles a little bit like an Amiga tick. And when we collide with things obviously that damage will be depleted. You can see in this platform game we can collect a number of extra stars and they will actually give us magic potions that you can see on the bottom bar, more of those later on, but for now it's the usual platforming fare, all we have to do is to get towards the end of the level by moving of course over to the right. And to do that in the enchanted forest we can ride on flowers and by pulling down and pressing fire and moving left and right we can actually select extra weapons and extra tools that we can choose to use but unfortunately if we lose that life then we'll be sent back to the beginning of the level in this case i found a warp to somewhere else on the level but that's killed me anyway and so that sends us all the way back so you can see that we were given one of those magical bonus items on the bottom bar the first one makes us inflate over gaps the second one gives us a hat so we can jump on top of that and reach hard to reach platforms and the third one is a whirlwind so we can spin over gaps and the fourth one is a smart bomb which should hopefully blow up everything on that screen you can see a hat on that platform that gives us another one of those hats to jump over those gaps and three items in this game are definitely required to make it across gaps so those will certainly start to appear later on as soon as that bonus hat materializes that will run away and so you have to jump on top of that of gaps and sometimes if you aren't quick enough of course that hat will run away and leave you stranded in the middle of the level 
And yes, this is the very first time I've played this game ever. So let's see how far we can get on this playthrough and take on those enemies, which at this stage resemble garden critters, a bit like Apidia. And just like Apidia, we are at the size of a small critter. And you can see on later levels that, that we'll be taking advantage of, much like Robocod and things like that, to provide us much more colorful levels. You can see the level design at the moment is an AJ game, so it would be nice and colorful, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And let's take out this pair as we move on to the level two. Unfortunately, our health is not restored after every level, but we can find sporadic health pickups if we make it that far. And as usual with these games, if you make it that far with all the weapons and all the health, then you can make it towards the end of that level. In the meantime, I'm trying to choose which of the bonus items I want to use to get over this gap. And for this, I'm choosing the whirlwind and simply jumping across. And it's great to do that. Unfortunately, it doesn't last very long, but we last saw an effect like that in Ruffian, where we could transform a whirlwind about, like the Tasmanian Devil. But this game is not Ruffian, it's certainly a lot easier than that in some respects, but in some respects a lot harder, and it's a gamble sometimes whether to use up one of our bonus items, just like blowing ourselves up into a balloon, but in this case we do not have one of those spare, so we cannot collect all those extra stars. The bonus weapons will also be in the shape of a weapon, and these bonus stars are simply for score, so you don't really have to collect those, but it's great effect that they are there. And you can see some parallax in the background with some nice parallax clouds and some mushrooms on the horizon. We also gain a small selection of voice sound effects, and they are always appreciated in any game. And this oil can, well, that gives us a little bit more health, not that much, but a little bit. And that will do absolutely nothing for us if we end up landing on these spikes. So the best way over those spikes is usually to balloon over, unless you land on top of an enemy just like this. And most of the time you can kill that enemy just like that by jumping on it. But in this case, that tomato was not for squashing. So back to the start of the level we go, and avoiding those spinning jennies, yes we cannot afford to waste these pickups, because if we do, then that means that we'll be out of those pickups, when we really need them most. And sometimes they will drive us into trouble, and sometimes the enemies appear on that screen right at the last moment, so you'll have to either anticipate those, or inch forward along that level. I am not inching forward because this is my first try and I want to try to rush through it. So let's try to use up the last of those tokens and any stories that we didn't collect will still be there on our run through, but any tokens that we picked up unfortunately will stay missing. We can also see many similarities between Adrian Cummings' previous game, Doodlebug, which was an OCS game, so any Amiga could play that, and you can see some great backgrounds and some similar level design, and that is more similar to the Mario format, with of course spinning just like Sonic. So before that he created a very similar game as well, so the heritage of this game, as we shall see, has certainly been created, and now we're getting towards the end of this level, let's try out the third level of the three in this first world. We can also upgrade our star power to give us large stars and they should really get through those enemies on any level, but unfortunately we died so we lose that ability and we only get to keep anything that we've picked up and not used so far. Unlike Robocod and other games that we've seen, no, you cannot pull down to see what's below you off a platform, so you might just land on some spikes and some instant death. So leaps of faith in this game are particularly appreciated, and of course enemies leaping onto that screen at high speed means sometimes they can wander straight into you. 
So, laying into those guys with full star power right from the go, anticipating those, and uh, this inching forward is definitely the way to do it. So, let's try to get that tactic to work. And if we can't, we can always choose to use one of our special weapons. <laughs> We don't really need full health, but the health is right over, of course, a pile of spikes, and so we can't always jump into that, and now we have barely any health whatsoever. So that wasn't a wise idea, and of the five lives, we're down to three, and it's a good idea to preserve lives, of course, as many as possible, and preserve all those weapons before we get to that end of level boss. By far, the most important weapon to have is the hat trick on the very end, of which we have three at the moment, that will smart bomb everything on our screen, and we can use lots of those against that end of level boss to get rid of him. So we have three at the moment, let's preserve those as we run ever closer towards the end of the level, and even though we tried to inch forward, the enemy still ran directly into us. Luckily, we've managed to get some oil, and that's given us the large stars to grease our way through that level, and hopefully from here on in, it should be an easy walk to that finish. You can see the screen moves very quickly with each jump, and appears rather clunky, and that jump is rather small as well, and I'm not quite sure, but I think that enemy respawned, so respawning enemies on these levels are never very appreciated. Luckily at the end of level boss never respawns, but you can see we lost our good weapon, that means that we have to tackle this thing the hard way. That creature has four limbs, and using that smart bomb we can get rid of those one at a time, and unfortunately we only have three of those, so that leaves one limb remaining. So we'll have to fire our weapon and get rid of that. And whilst you see me actually trying to do that, I'll tell you a little bit more about the author of this game. And Adrian Cummings was based in Portsmouth in the UK. He was a typical bedroom coder. And he began with the R-Type game in 1988, otherwise known as Arcadia. And fortunately that was never released. Um, there is a cover disc demo of that floating around somewhere but unfortunately that never made it, and other games such as Egg, Outlander, Outlander 2, Orbit, Flip Over, and of course Fantastic Island, you've never heard of because those were never released either, and there is a Man Machine demo somewhere as well. Adrian Cummings also took it upon himself to convert US Gold's other classic games, Beachhead and Beachhead 2, and Raid Over Moscow, onto the Amiga, and he did all the graphics for those, but unfortunately that's as far as he got, and so the list of unreleased games at this point is huge. But he did actually get a release in 1990 with Nucleus, and Nucleus was an R-Type clone, so you could say that this had the R-Type heritage. And he also had a release in 1990 with Bug Bash, which was published by Core Design, Core Design, no stranger to publishing great games, and apart from City Limits, which was not released in 1991, and neither was Vaxuit Jack, which a demo is floating around of that game, he came back for Core Design in 1992 with Doodlebug, which you've seen graphics for already, and then he continued with Core in 1993 with Cyberpunks, and then he created and coded and sounded and created everything for this game in 1996. After this, he then went on to Tommy Gun in 96, and then a Diablo type game known as Castle Kingdoms appeared in 1997. <laughs> Stage clear! And after defeating the spider boss at the end of the enchanted path, this has made the clown unfortunately even more angry, so you'll find him inside the house, so prepare to meet your doom, Tin Toy. Let's press fire, let's check out the house. Having 
made it to the house, we start out in the kitchen, you can see on the top, and you can also see the kitchen window flashing, and there are several levels in this game, perhaps six or seven, I haven't actually counted them all, but it will certainly keep you going for some time. There are no passwords to type in, or saves, or anything like that, so you'll have to get through the lot the first time. You can see in the house we start out on the worktop, and here you can see some product placement, as well as some jelly and a few carrots, reminding me of the Zool review, and you can also see me dying as well, just like the Zool review, so let's try that level all over again from the start. You can see some hamburgers, and we actually get to kill the sausages and jump on top of fried eggs. And so this game does not take itself too seriously, but fortunately that jumping on offer is a little bit clunky, just as it would be with a tin toy. Finding another one of those random warps, we find a bonus screen, and yet again we'll have to jump out of the way of that enemy, because landing on top of that thing doesn't always guarantee a hit, and certainly not a kill either but you can find hidden warps dotted around these levels, and that's also a great feature, but you won't find too many bonus blocks, not like Doodlebug, and you can't really do a massive sonic jump onto their heads, not like Doodlebug, so to my mind this game isn't as good on the playability front, even though graphically it's certainly taken a mega leap forward. <laughs> So I have to avoid baked beans on this level, just like Micro Machines, and so the tiny humour of this well-published game is amazing, but unfortunately it was not published by a major publisher, it was developed in-house by Adrian Cummings' own publishing company and software industry, known as Mutation Software, and unfortunately that came to an end in 2004, after 15 years of creating games. Adrian Cummings is well and truly still on the scene with his mobile amusements website and there he's managed to convert and update many games for many mobile platforms including updates of Doodlebug and I also saw an update as well for Tommy Gun, which isn't really highly rated on the Lemon Amiga database but I didn't actually see a modern conversion of this game. In general, I feel Adrian Cummings' music is great, it's certainly terrific and fits the atmosphere of this game, and the sound effects are also okay, not amazingly outstanding, but still fitting to the job. And the graphics are really outstanding, you can see all the graining in that woodwork, and that's absolutely fine for a cartoon game such as this. Now the problem is simply that jumping, and it would feel a little clunky being a tin toy robot, but unfortunately that jumping does let it down slightly, and it isn't as large as it was in such games like Turrican and Robocod, where we got to jump very large distances, and we could time things very easily. In this game, sometimes you really have to time things to perfection, and if you don't, you'll get gassed with those gas jet burners. So this game does have variety on offer, and certainly the levels provide some variety, so let's try at least to get on to the next level and see some of that in action. Now we move on to the sinks, and of course sinks need jumping over because our tin toy cannot swim. So, just to conclude, this was released on Mail Order at $14.99 and available directly through Adrian Cummings' Mail Order Company, which was based in Portsmouth, and Steve Amiga printed the full address of that on the actual review. And that brings us to the reviews. The lowest score came from Amiga Power, which gave this game 67%. Lemon Amiga gives this 69%, Amiga Format said this was worth 79%, and CEO Amiga gave Tin Toy Adventure AGA 84%. The reviewer said that it was his game of the month, and he was very charmed by it. I think this two-disc game is absolutely great. It rises up there to the top, but there's something about that playability which unfortunately is a little bit clunky, and it would have been great if we could simply roll over the enemies, like the previous game, instead of the spells and the stars that we get in this one. 
but it's not a bad game and it's certainly not rated bad in the magazines so I'd probably give this at least a 6.5 out of 10 for effort and it's a bedroom coded one man band job it's certainly great so if it is great then maybe it's even worth a 7 so maybe check out this game and thank you yet again for viewing another Lemon Amiga game guide and review hope to see you again in the next one thank you